Hello, my name is Will Huging. I'm a senior technical analyst with the Engine Solutions team here at Nuix. I'm here to take you through our new Data Finder plugin that's available for Nuix Workstation. It's an additional plugin that works as a script that you download and install separately from version 7.4.1 of Nuix. You get two main programs to use here. One is the Entity Processing Configuration. What it does is allow you to use the Data Finder supplied entities or regular expressions with your normal Nuix case. You can manage your entities within this option here, the Entity Definitions, so you can edit the ones that are there or add your own. You can also create Entity Presets, which, which is a way to logically group your entities so you can utilize a bunch in one go rather than having to select them all one at a time. The main thing I'm going to take you through though is the Processing Configuration screen. That's where you can actually set up a very powerful pre-evidence filter. So what it will do is create a selective index that only indexes the items that are responsive to the rules you create. This does have presets too. You've got the ability to save your rules into a grouping so you can use it over and over again. The way the rules work is you can add them here. You've got the ability that they're and, or, or. You also have the ability to group them to put in nesting rules as well. So you can get quite tricky with the way your rules are set up. You've got the ability to use item date. So for example, you could do between dates. You have a keyword. So if the keyword exists in the document, I want it in or I don't want it in. I want it explicitly excluded. I can obviously use and and all's there to make that quite powerful. If I have a Nuix query that I know beforehand that I want to utilize, that's available. You can put that in there. You can use regular expressions, put in a file path. So the full file paths you like are to exclude or include. And if you like, for example, there's the option here to have the ends with. So if you've got a bunch of folders that you know that you want to skip over, where it exists could be anywhere, that's a good way to use that. You can choose to just look at different kinds and types. Obviously that gets quite powerful when you're utilizing it with the and. There's the digest list available. So if you're looking for exactly some type of item and there's more options there again to give you more power in, in your rules. So what I'm going to do in this example is I have the publicly available Enron data. I'm going to just do a search over a few mailboxes for information there. For the sake of this demonstration, let's say we're looking for anyone who's talked about Ken Lay and how they've discussed Ken Lay in their emails. So I'm going to put that keyword there as my rule. I'm then going to go to processing settings and I can set how I want items to be returned around that. So for example, do I want the item itself or do I want the whole family returned? For this, let's just say the item. What do I want returned here? Text, binary, text and binary, or not the binary or text. That's important in case you don't want to actually create a case filled with sensitive data. For example, if you're doing this on credit cards, you might not want to have a whole bunch of credit cards stored in a case. So if you store that, you'll know where items have credit cards, you'll know where they exist on your network, but you won't actually have them. For this, let's say text only. I can then, if I like, choose to what I want to do with non-responsive items, if I tick this, it will actually index everything, but the way it tags and puts in custom metadata will be different based on the rules. So you've got that ability if you want to just index everything, but use Data Finder to actually tell you what's responsive. You can bring in corrupted encrypted data if you like. So if, if the worker side script hits something that it can't do anything with because it's corrupted or it's encrypted, that can be returned to Workbench so you can choose what to do with that item. Play it on the safe side because it might be responsive. There's a more powerful person name identification available. You can have that on or off. Here's where you can utilize what entities you want. I'm gonna say, let's just look at the text only. And I've got a preset called Australia, which has the passport, telephone number, and tax file number in Australia. If I want, I can right click and I can add additionals. Let's say I'm interested in email addresses. I've also got OCR settings. So what it will do is OCR as I'm processing. So any item it hits based on my OCR profiles in Nuix itself, it will OCR and look within that to find if it's responsive or not. That helps widen the scope of exactly what you're searching for and makes it more useful. Once I've done that, I click done. I can save this to use it at a later time. It will save it out to a JSON file. I can also open previously saved JSON files if I want. But let's click done. That will open up a text file which contains the worker side script I need to run it in Nuix. The text file is very important. We can save that if we want to keep track of them, but what we need to do is select it all, copy it, and then we're going to paste it 
into Nuix once we get to the point of adding the worker side script. So what I'm going to do is create a case. I'm going to process a few Enron PSTs, and then I'm going to utilize this worker side script to do the processing. So once I've added my evidence, I can still use the settings as I want them to be. So do keep in mind how the settings that you set here interact with the settings you want in your data finder plugin. They will work together and cause issues or not, depending on how you've done that. What we then do is put in the worker side script that we copied out of the text file and put that in here. You can see here, I've got one previously. So if you've used one before, it will stay saved in the processing settings. So be mindful of that next time you want to use Nuix, maybe without using the worker side script. Um, if you want a new worker side script, then you've got to come in here and delete it and replace it. The worker side script is something that is a script that works on the workers, basically. Um, think of the workers as your clients and think of Nuix as a server. So what it does is it's able to do work on the files that it's hitting at that kind of client side or that worker side area. So it's a very powerful way that's been there for a while um, to be able to actually work with the actual files themselves before they hit the Nuix engine. It's important, it's very important to point out that by default it'll be at ECMA script. So be sure that you could come in and change that to Ruby. It simply won't work if it's not set onto Ruby. It'll just sit at the processing screen but actually not start processing. If you like, feel free to put in a comment at the top here just to say uh, exactly what this is for, just to help you be reminded, I guess, of um, what this is. Or you could also put that into your text file if you're going to save those and use them over and over again. So what I'm going to do is click OK. Uh, it'll come up to where the pre-filter evidence is if I want to utilize more evidence filtering. But of course, I'm using a much more powerful pre-filter evidence with this SDF plugin. So I'm not going to worry about that at this point. So I'm going to let that process. What it will do is do the processing as normal. So it will show you the items as they're coming through, or I should say it will show you the items as they're being touched by Nuix. So everything will look the same. It won't only just show you the items it's indexing. It is normal for the processing to take a little bit longer to start up because it needs to load the SDF Java file that you install with it and also just start off the worker site scripting. So that only took two minutes to go through three PSTs, admittedly fairly small PSTs, and just index the items that are responsive. So what I can do now, filter by immaterial, and it'll show me the hit items. So I've got 34 items that are being brought in as that are material that contain something. If I want to know exactly what's responsive, I can come down to tagged, and I've got here tags of what's not responsive. Things that are not responsive are generally kind of top level items or that could contain, or the parent item that contains a responsive item. So that needs to be brought in regardless of your family choice. And of course, we've got our responsive items. So if I double click on that, there's a search so I can have tag SDF responsive. So I can utilize that to find at any time all the items that are responsive in my case. You may note as well that there's lots of immaterial items in here it will bring back the structure of what you're looking at. So all the container items uh, that are available there. That's helpful if you want to, at another point, bring in the child items. For example, I might decide this PST, it has some hits in there. Based on that, I want to return all the emails in this so I can scan for child items and bring those back in. A good example of marrying the power of the workstation with the plugin. It's also important to show you here the metadata that gets added. So as we use this, there's custom metadata. In this instance, it will show you the matching criteria. So it will show you why it's been seen as responsive. So you always know. If I want to, I can use that and just search for these items. That's also important if you've got lots and lots of different criteria in your rules, basically. If you haven't seen it before, what you can do is go to the help topics. You can click on search fields. And if you see here, you've got the option for custom metadata and you can design a query based on the custom metadata that's there, utilizing custom metadata, then the field name, and then the value you're looking for. So for this, it should look something like this. And that returns me everything that's specifically responsive to that one criteria set up in all my rules for this process. So that's a very quick overview of what the plugin does for you in the Nuix workstation. I think it's an extremely powerful way to pre-filter your evidence and to get key insights on the data you've got very quickly and then make decisions to go to the next step on what you want to do with that data. So there's a lot of applications for doing that and I hope people enjoy utilizing it and using it. Thank you very much.